Let's look at more differential equation applications and modeling. It says a patient is given the drug warfarin, an anticoagulant, intravenously at the rate of 0.5 milligrams per hour. It's metabolized and leaves the body at a rate of 2% per hour. So the difference in these examples versus the last lecture, these have a rate in and a rate out. If you go back, and I'm scrolling and looking, I believe it's lecture 22, yes. If you go back and you go to the second part of lecture 22, these are going to be the differential equations that were in that K times Y minus A. All right, so if you don't kind of remember that, go back and review. It. Review. So I have a rate in minus rate out. So my rate in, 0 0.5 milligrams per hour, and then 2% of what was there. Of course, if the initial quantity is small, so if this value is really, really small, then the rate the drug is excreted is less than the rate. So this would be less than the rate it's entering the body. And if the rate in is greater than the rate out, then of course we would have our rate of change would be positive. If this quantity is large enough, um, greater than 0 0.5, then the rate is negative and the quantity is decreasing. So if you think about it, if it's positive, then it's trying to reach some equilibrium. If it's negative, it's coming down. There's maybe too much of the drug in the body and trying to reach that equilibrium. And so that's all this is kind of reviewing for a small quantity, the Q, the quantity will increase until the rate in equals the rate out. For a large Q, the quantity will decrease until the rate in equals the rate out. So for example, here, if all I did was I moved the 0 0.5 to the other side and I can solve for Q. So this value of Q, so in other words, when Q equals 25, if this is the initial amount, you can see my, my differential equation equals zero. This is called the equilibrium solution. So if you're asked to find the equilibrium solution, you set your differential equation equal to zero. And as I did, solve for Q, because remember you saw me move um, this value to the other side, solve for Q to get 25, and that gives me my equilibrium solution. So looking at this with a slope field, because remember these are my slopes for that differential equation, once again, if I'm above that equilibrium value, this is going to come down, known as exponential decay. If I'm at the equilibrium, I'm fine. If I'm below it, then I'm going to come up to that equilibrium. Um, in lecture 22, once again, we went through all of these steps to find the uh, general solution. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to go through all the steps again. As you're going to see, you're going to put your rate in minus rate out in this form, and then this will be your um, solution. So write the general solution to the differential equation. Well, the problem is, is if you go back here, it's k times, and in parentheses, y minus a. So this part's going to seem a little different because what I want to do is I want to rewrite this to look exactly like that. Because if I do, then I will be able, if, I, if my differential equation is in this exact form, then I'll be able to write exactly my solution. And so that's pretty easy to do because all I have to do is factor out this constant of proportionality. So if I factor out negative 0.02, and this is kind of going back to algebra, um, you could kind of just say what you're doing, you're dividing each term by negative 0.02. And then notice I put the Q first, because I just want to put it in this form. And you can already see that A is that 25, my equilibrium. And so in this case, if I factor out negative 0.02, I divide 0.5 by negative 0.02, that's where I get the negative 25. I divide negative 0.02q by negative 0.02, and that's where I get q. So now this is exactly in this form, and so it makes it easy to take this now and put it into my actual solution, because I'm just looking at the actual variables. Okay, so as I can see, my a is going to be my 25, 
My k in this case is the negative 0 0.02. And something's in my way. To move back a little bit. All right, there we go. Not sure how that happened. All right, and so now as you can see, I can go from my differential equation that is in that rate in minus rate out form and write my solution. So just convince yourself where all these pieces are coming from, okay, from these values. And now I have my solution. So I can take this equation, plug in a particular time, and as, of course, as you're going to see, if we have some given information, I can solve for C, but then have this actual equation for predicting. So as I mentioned, for finding C, now to find a particular solution when the initial quantity, okay, Q sub 0 is 20. So if I start at 20, I plug 20 in for my initial, and now I have something I can solve for C. My initial is at time zero, so I plug zero in here, and I solve for C, and I get my value for C. So thus when Q sub zero equals 20, you can see now my solution, why my C is negative. Um, if I graph this, now I'm trying to head up to my equilibrium of 25. And so that's what it's saying here. If I want to find a particular solution, well, let's say I'm at my original uh, or initial quantity is at that equilibrium. Then, of course, C equals zero. So when I have an initial quantity of 25, then I can see that if I plug in my value of zero here, this just gives me 25 and I'm at equilibrium. If I'm above and so I plug in 30, my initial zero, I get five plus five. And so now my negative KT is what's bringing this down to my equilibrium. And that's the whole point here is trying to figure out how I can reach my equilibrium based off of this equation. So you can see what's you know, really working this equation is that value of C. Am I above equilibrium or below equilibrium? And, the, and this is in the long run. So if in the long run you're reaching that equilibrium, then your solution is stable. If not, if you had something that looked like this and it's starting to head up or starting to come down, then this is unstable. All right, find the equilibrium solution for this differential equation and state if the solution is stable or unstable. Well, equilibrium solution is when your differential equation equals zero. So set it equal to zero. Most of you could probably look at it already and see the answer is 10, right? Because that's going to equal zero. And so then you solve this for um, B. So I just distributed this out just to show you the steps. And solve for B equals 10. And so 10 would be my equilibrium solution. My general solution would look like this. Where did I get these values? Well, as you can see, that's my A, okay, because this is Y minus A, the 10, my equilibrium, and then my K is this value of 2 here. So if I actually plot for various values of C, okay, as you can see here, I started up at 14, here I started down at 9. It definitely looks like that this is plummeting, this is actually going up, and so this is definitely unstable. All right, all of these examples, you're going to have a rate in minus a rate out. So a patient is given a drug, 43.2 milligrams per hour. Um, this one's kind of a little weird. It's a homework question is why I'm doing it. You can imagine the drug is entering a compartment of volume of 35,000 milliliters where it's just circling. The drug is just circulates in this volume, in this volume part of the body. The rate at which the drug leaves the patient is proportional to the quantity there with this constant of proportionality. Assume the patient's body contains none of the drug initially. You are given concentration equals quantity over volume. So you're going to see you're going to need this. So everything that's given to me, my rate in minus my rate out of the quantity that is there, all right? I'm going to divide both sides by volume because they want me to write my equation for concentration. This is written for quantity. 
Okay, so to be able to put this in terms of concentration, if all of this is in quantity, then I could just divide everything by volume. So I just, instead of dividing, I multiplied by 1 over V, divided by volume, divided by volume. Okay, quantity divided by volume. So now what happens is my quantity over volume, this becomes my change in my concentration. Okay, quantity, notice here, quantity over volume. So my change in concentration over change in time. This was given, if you go back on the slides, the volume 35,000. And in this case here, quantity over volume then is in terms. So I have this in terms of my um, dependent function. All right, how do I put it in this actual form, the K times Y minus A? Well, I have to figure out what's my K. Well, it's the negative 0.082. So I'm going to divide every term by negative 0.82. So in other words, I'm factoring that out front. So that gets divided off. If you put that in your calculator, 43.2 divided by 35,000, and then what you get, divide by negative 0.082. That's where um, I'm getting this value, the 0.015 from, okay? And so by factoring, by factoring this out, so this is the first step where I divided it, and then I divided out negative 0.082. This is in my um, differential equation form, my K, and then my function minus A, my amount. And so here, therefore, this would be my actual solution. And then I would say, well, if this is my solution, what is happening in the long run? So in the long run, if you remember, we had this before where I mentioned, what does E to the negative KT look like? It's heading in the long run. It's heading towards zero, so this piece is going to zero. So in the long run of this, this solution, meaning far, far out in time, then my limiting value would be 0 0.015 milligrams per milliliter. And that is all, folks. Woohoo!